Hey everyone, I'm Cripbuff, and today I'll be reviewing the legendary hand cannon, the Loud Lullaby. You can craft this weapon by completing the repeatable quest, Essence of Brutality, which you can pick up from the Lectern of Enchantment. This quest requires you to complete activities on the moon, get 50 hand cannon kills, and collect the Necromatic Strand from the Hall of Wisdom on the moon. After completing these steps, you'll return to the Lectern of Enchantment and turn in the quest for your own version of this weapon. For stats, the Loud Lullaby is a 110 RPM kinetic hand cannon. It comes with a base range of 58, stability of 25, handling of 32, reload speed of 31, aim assistance of 60, and recoil direction of 98. Compared to the Duke, the most popular 110 hand cannon, this weapon's range, stability, reload speed, and aim assistance all come in behind that weapon. The good news is that its handling and its recoil direction are both superior to that of a baseline Duke. With the recent adjustment to damage drop-off from greater ranges for hand cannons, this means that even a well-rolled and masterworked Loud Lullaby is going to struggle in activities when compared to the Duke. For PvP players on console, the Loud Lullaby and all other 110s are much harder to use than their 180 RPM cousins. The main benefit to a 110 RPM hand cannon over the 180s were their range and two-tap potential after proccing something like Rampage or Kill Clip. With the recent range adjustments to these weapons, that edge over the faster RPMs is significantly reduced. The release of another 180 RPM precision frame hand cannon into the game with Shadow Keep for your energy slot means that you'll be able to customize your loadout around the 180s with even more ease, so that's another mark against this weapon. Moving on to the perk pool for this gun, it comes with the same 9 standard barrel perks you can find on all fixed sight weapons. Arrowhead Break, Chambered Compensator, Corkscrew Rifling, Extended Barrel, Fluted Barrel, Full Bore, Hammer Forged Rifling, Polygonal Rifling, and Small Bore. Of these, I recommend Small Bore for console players for that bonus to both range and stability. This is a great bonus to two stats without any penalties to the weapon stats. For PC, I suggest either Hammer Forged Rifling, Extended Barrel, or Full Bore. The bonus to range from these perks outweigh any penalties to the weapon's other stats for M&K players. For ammunition and magazine perks, the Loud Lullaby can come with two of any of the following. Accurized Rounds, Drop Mag, Appended Mag, Tactical Mag, Extended Mag, Steady Rounds, Alloy Magazine, and Flared Magwell. As expected, Accurized Rounds wins out in this column for both console and PC due to its plus 10 to range. That's not to say there aren't benefits to the other perks in this column, but what Accurized Rounds is the best at is range, and that's the greatest overall choice for this weapon given how important range is to hand cannons. For the third perk column, we have a choice between Grave Robber, Threat Detector, Under Pressure, Outlaw, Subsistence, and Field Prep. The standouts here for me are Outlaw, Subsistence, and Field Prep. Outlaw's benefits are fairly obvious at this point. Faster reload speeds are always going to be beneficial to Guardians no matter the sandbox. The only trouble with Outlaw, of course, is having to proc a precision kill. Subsistence after its reworking with the latest update is another good choice because it allows yet another means of circumventing one of the fundamental friction points in a shooter, reloading. Previously, this perk was far too punishing on your ammo reserves, but with Shadowkeep's launch and its new version of this perk, it's a solid choice for this column. Getting rounds in the magazine after scoring kills works very well in PvE for harder hitting weapons such as these 110s. Field prep excels in this column for the exact same reasons that Outlaw and Subsistence do. Faster reloads, only now you can do so on demand without need of a precision kill or even killing an enemy. By simply crouching, you can vastly improve your ready, stow, and reload speeds. Handling and reload speeds are some of the biggest weaknesses of these 110 hand cannons, and the single perk compensates for them both by just remembering to crouch. A lot of players are looking for a field prep on heavy weapons, but it's an amazing perk on this weapon as well. Over in the final perk column, we have the options of Explosive Payload, Opening Shot, Fourth Times the Charm, Demolitionist, Multi-Kill Clip, and Rampage. Let's go over what each of these can do for you depending on your playstyle and the playlist you're in. Explosive Payload is a perk some players love and others hate. That's because it splits the bullet damage into two numbers, one for the impact of the round hitting its target and another for the detonation of the explosive ammunition. With the reduction in overall range that hand cannons saw with Shadowkeep's launch, this perk is even better than it was before. The explosive damage portion of this perk isn't subjected to penalties of damage drop off at greater lengths. This allows you to possibly contend with other guardians in the spaces you're accustomed to in the Crucible before the update. Opening Shot is next, and it's another great perk for this gun because it again allows you to extend the Lullaby's lethality by giving that first shot extra range and accuracy. As the 110s fire at such a slower rate than do the other families of hand cannons, this perk is arguably better than something like Rampage. In a duel between two hand cannon users, one with a Lullaby and the other a Spare Rations or a 180, the player using the Lullaby will lose 9 times out of 10 if they miss even one shot. The ability of the 150s and 180s to spam shots gives them a natural advantage in this scenario. Opening Shot gives you a much better chance of winning that duel. Demolitionist is a solid choice for grenade-centric builds such as middle or bottom tree Voidwalker for its ability to help recharge your grenade energy with each kill. Combining this perk with the right combination of perks and stats on your armor, you could have a grenade ready for almost any duel. 
I almost forgot about uh, Four Times the Charm, which is another perk that is centered around kind of bypassing the reload mechanic. It works by continuously landing precision hits and then creating ammo and putting it back into your magazine. This would allow you to continue to fire a little bit more than you normally would, but again, with only eight rounds in the magazine as a baseline, this isn't really something that works unless you're combining it with something like a pendant mag, extended mag, or a uh, backup mag mod. Lastly, we have the two damage dealing perks in this column, multi-kill clip, which increases the damage of your weapon, stacking up to three times. Given the base magazine size of the lullaby is eight rounds, you'll be reloading quite often with this gun equipped. That magazine size has a natural synergy with multi-kill clip by this design. Your higher damaging shots will one-tap lower health enemies in quick order, after which you'll reload to activate the perk and focus fire a boss or a major. It's important to note that the lullaby is the only 110 hand cannon in the game capable of rolling with this perk as of Shadowkeep's launch. Rampage on 110 RPM hand cannons retains the same value now as it did before, letting you two-tap enemies in the crucible after scoring your first kill. This again gives these slower hand cannons a chance against their faster firing counterparts through reducing the weapon's TTK. Both Rampage and Multi-Kill Clip also help fight off damage drop-off by improving the overall damage of the weapon itself. For values in PvE, against normal enemies, Multi-Kill Clip times 1 deals 117 more damage to the body and 120% for crits. Times 2 takes that up to 133% for the body and 140% to crits. And for times 3, that changes again to 150% for the body and 160% to headshots. Against majors, ultras, and bosses, the bonus damage to both head and body shots are the same, with times 1 doing 117% damage, times 2 going up to 133%, and times 3 capping off at 150%. Now let's look at those values for rangefinder and PvE for comparison. Again, against minor enemies, Rampage times 1 will do 111% of normal damage to the body and 115% on precision hits. Rampage times 2 does 124% more damage to the body and 122% to the head. And finally, for times 3, Rampage deals 138% of damage to the body and 135% to critical hits. Just like multi-kill clip, Rampage stack values are the same for both body and headshots against majors, ultras, and bosses. Rampage times 1 will do 110% more damage, times 2 dealing 121% more damage, and 3 stacks bring your total damage output to 150% of its normal potential. There is one exception to this rule with times 2 Rampage dealing just 1% more damage to the headshot against these enemies. For PvE, the winner here on numbers alone is multi-kill clip. However, your own personal preference will matter the most here based on which of the two fits your personal playstyle. Lastly, onto Masterworks and Mods. It seems an obvious choice to experienced players, but we have to remember that there are new players joining Destiny 2 thanks to the new light edition of the game. So for Masterwork options, you will want range above everything else. That rework to damage drop off really did a number on the effective ranges of hand cannons, and every little bit you can get back is going to be a big win in my book. You can equip all the usual mods onto the lullaby, and it can also be equipped with anti-barrier and unstoppable mods to counter those mechanics when you see them in the Nightfall or the Vex Offensive playlist. That's all for today's video. I want to thank you for watching, and I want you to sound off in the comments with your favorite roles for this hand cannon, and what you like or dislike about it. Goodbye for now.